What up, what up, what up, people in the spot? How's it going? My name is Dub Digital. I come up on the internet twice a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. Now it is 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Tuesdays and Thursdays-ish. Give me a break. This one might be a little bit shorter than usual, um, just a little short, shorter than an hour. Um, I got some things to do, things to do, but how are you guys feeling? Just pulling up some charts right now, you know, doing what I do, running late. <laughs> it is what it is, baby. It is what it is. How are you guys feeling? Good? What What's crypto even doing? That's a pro tip. Got the crypto blues. Sad is going down. This is what you need to do. Stop typing. Close your laptop. And go outside and do something. Or do anything else. <laughs> this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Hey, there's nothing we weren't expecting, though. You know, it could go down a little bit more, you know. It might go down just a little bit more. But it's okay, man. It's okay. See, the problem is everyone is, um, they got, like, they're so traumatized from the double top of last cycle, 2021, you know, marginal high. They're like, what if it happens again? Well, you know, I could get hit in the face by a comment right now. That could happen. I mean, if we're talking about theoreticals anything could really happen but it's not probable right you don't want to think about whatever can happen what's most probable probability wise that double top was uncharacteristic of bitcoin in 2021 and because it's uncharacteristic because it hasn't happened frequently over time i don't think that's going to be the case here reason being is the world is just so much different than when it was when that was occurring right we were in a global lockdown. You know, now we're not. Now we're not. A lot of leverage from Sam Bankman Freed and his cronies. You know, that's starting to get flushed out. We actually have true adoption coming from Wall Street and baby boomers, pensioners, 401ers. That's different. And it's an election year. If you don't believe me that that matters, watch, man. I'm seeing a lot of people talking about how, oh, you know, based off previous cycles, that targets end of October 2025 to be the cycle top. <clears throat> They're just looking at 2017 and acting like it's going to be the exact same. You know, I have a sneaking suspicion we're in some kind of sneaky cycle. It's like longer than like anticipated. I showed you on the Bitcoin chart that. In 2013, we had some kind of like a, a two-phased move up over the course of like six months. I'm suggesting we have like a two-phased move up over the course of a few years. Why the difference? Bigger market cap takes longer. It makes sense when you think about it. But if you just look at the four-year cycle as very stringent and rigid, then you can't see that. You can't see the possibility. I used to be like that. But I'm realist too, you know, like last cycle wasn't exactly the four-year cycle. How are you going to point at a marginal top of about $5,000 above and say that's a typical four-year cycle? That is an atypical four-year cycle. That's not even a four-year cycle. That's missing the whole euphoria phase, which I think is coming now after we get through this. It's all a progress. It's all a process. How are you guys feeling? No one feels anything? Wow. Zero people? I know I got seven people here. Shady, shady. You guys lurking? You guys lurkers? I know y'all be lurking. Nine people, what's good? Say hi. Say what's up, man. Come on, man. I'm out here by myself talking to my wall. <laughs> Yo, Dub, what's good? Nothing much, man. Chilling, chilling. Um, while, uh, while I got people, you know, filtering in, I guess, hopefully. Um, Let me share, throw up my screen. And do a quick chill. Why not, man? Let me let me chill a little bit. A little bit. I'll, it'll be done. Trust. You guys don't know I'm the head of PR over at Player Chain, uh, which is a Avalanche subnet that's launching in about a month. Um, it's a rebrand of Zoo Games. If you guys know, I do a lot of work with WAN Chain. This was an ecosystem project that's rebranding, moving over to Avalanche, and focus on multi-chain gaming and providing infrastructure for builders to come on here 
and really create cool stuff, fun stuff. So they could, so we handle the technical work and they handle the creativity. But 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 you could check me. I'm all over this thing doing X talks. I have one coming up right after this. That's why I got to bounce a little soon. But make sure to follow us. There's going to be some cool opportunities coming down the way in terms of potential airdrops. A little birdie told me, but well, you know, don't tell nobody. And then um, also fractionalized nodes. Um, we're doing something called node clusters, which is basically splitting up the nodes and letting more and more people participate simply by staking and taking a lot of the technical work out of securing nodes and all that. Because it does take some work. It does take some resources. Not everyone's you know, built like that. Doesn't mean they can't participate, man. We're inclusive over here that we are. But make sure you check them out. And it's at on player. And you probably seen on my ex account if you haven't seen me uh, talking about it. And you know, while I'm on it, right, follow me on next, man. Why not? At Dub Digital to use it's Dub Digital, but that's what we're running with. And if you're on X, follow me on YouTube. It's always better to be connected in many places. Ten people was good. One day, eight hours till having. What do you guys think? I want to see in the chat. I want to know what you think. Do you think it's going to be a sell the news event? I mean, it's kind of set up that way. And historically, it's been like that. But we could pull up the Bitcoin having Countdown. Sorry, I can't, I can't type in and talk at the same time. Look at me. No, that's not my thing. One day, five hours. 50 minutes, 13 seconds. Now it's 12. Time is ticking down very quickly. I remember the last having, man, in 2020. Wow, time flies, don't it? Um, last cycle, and let's let's look at it. I don't have to guess. But last cycle, we can see how long it took for Bitcoin's price to kick in and those real those those reward constrictions to actually take effect and show in the real world. Well, that's a good idea. So let's do that. Bitcoin on Bitstamp. Look at the handy dandy Bitcoin chart. We like to look at macro charts over here, guys. We're not going to zoom up. Right now is not the time to zoom up. We maybe could look at the you know coin market cap and see like how much things are going down, you know. But at a certain point, it gets counter. It's not productive. <laughs> just like you know, when things are going up a lot and you just keep looking how much things are going up, that's not productive either. You know, like we know what's happening. Let's zoom out a little bit. And keep our eye on the prize. Bitcoin dominance. No, no, no. I pulled the wrong chart. My bad. I'm talking too much, man. That's always been my problem. If you couldn't tell, Bitcoin at Bitstamp. Cool. Hey, Daddy O, what's good, man? 14 people. I got to say, you got to say, what's up, man? I'm going to come up with the internet. Blab for 40, 50 minutes. Say what's up. I want to know who's here. This is Bitcoin on Bitstamp. Okay. So it's not that scary, guys. I mean, we did go to all time highs, right? We hit it, we printed a new all time high technically. So, I mean, every single time we do that, we run into chop. I'm going to keep saying the same thing over and over every single week because it's like really important. You know, all time high, we have to start have some chop. All time high, it's a smaller square, but start to see some chop. Right here, we're getting chop. It happens every single time, right? Even right here in 2013, I guess I can do that one. Uh, where the heck? Rectangle, like right here. It's green. No, I want it red. Okay, whatever. What? <laughs> I don't care. It's a square, right? Got some chop right here, minimally. And this is kind of like one of the... Um, this is why things happening. I talked about it in the beginning, if you missed it. How I think we're doing something similar to 2013. It doesn't look exactly the same. But look at this chart. It doesn't look like verbatim anywhere. But the thing about charting, the thing about life, is not exactly the same, but it, it, it rhymes. Right, so you had a pump up in the first phase, a cool off bowl shape, and then a shoot up out of it. Pump up, cool off, 
a long cool off, shoot up out of it. The reason I'm thinking that this this move is going to be a little more exponential than ending it at 2025 is because look at what's happening, man. Look at who's here. We got like BlackRock. This is like, you know, when back here in 2020, everyone was saying institutions are here. That was like three hours capital and Sequoia and all that. I mean, they're pretty big for crypto funds, but they're not big compared to the big boy funds. We got the big boy funds in here now. And like, guys, they have the massive amount of budgeting, I mean, marketing budget to push this thing very high, very fast. 2017, remember all the coverage this thing got? And there was basically no marketing budget at all. We're going to have a very targeted, very like intense push. Look at the quality of the of the commercials. It's going to be insane. And then we're going to have wealth managers talking to people to get into this stuff. I just don't see a, a, a future where it's just like very boring and linear, linear like throughout a long time. Guys. If Bitcoin is moving like this back then when there was almost no exchange listings and it's moving like this when there was no freaking institutions in there and it was moving like this when there was like a few institutions in there. Imagine when everyone starts pouring into this thing at the same time. A lot of people think that, oh yeah, law of diminishing returns on Bitcoin. Maybe, maybe. But like this is a huge amount. Of money that can get pushed into this thing. I just don't see how like Black Rocks are going to take their time, you know, slowly accumulate. That doesn't sound right. You know, they might buy up on this dip too. We'll see what happens. I'm of the opinion that after the halving, we'll see a drop. You know, I mean, typically that's what's happened. But then we see a pop, right? So in 2020, oh yeah, I didn't even do what I said I was going to do. My bad. I do that sometimes, you know. It's it's all good. I'm just a man. I think having was around here last time, May or April or something like that. You could you could check me on that, but it was around here for sure. We had a big well, I guess was that the C V drop? Someone let me know in the chat. I don't want to pull it up right now, but I know you guys can do it. It's easy. 2020 having. I think it was roughly was it a year? About a year. I guess I need to put the halvings on this thing before I talk crap. But yeah, what I've seen is between six months and a year. Right. We will see. We will see. Next time I'll have the halvings under my bed. But like I'm saying, like, you know, we haven't really seen an immediate pump up. On Bitcoin after halvings. Now, could this time be different? It could. Nothing's technically forever the same. And, you know, people say, oh, you know, next, you say this time could be different. That's dumb. It's like, I mean, there's no 100% chance on anything, right? But I don't give it a big chance. That's the to think. You got to think in terms of probabilities and in investing, right? I mean, look, that's why I hodl. I don't know, really. You know, like, I don't think anyone knows exactly. Anyone who says they are a crypto expert know exactly how this moves as a liar. Because I've been, I haven't been here the whole time, but I've been here a long time. And um, even dudes that came up with me still are like, you know, they hodl because it's safer. What are you going to go through a whole bear market for and just like try to get cute, get it wrong and miss the, the move? Because you got to understand at some point, Bitcoin does something that's unexpected. That's why FOMO occurs. And that could be hard to understand if you haven't been in a Bitcoin cycle before. But FOMO only occurs when a large majority of the people miss the move. Then they jump in because they feel like they got missed out. Fear of missing out. So like, don't get wrapped up in the whole, oh, everyone knows exactly what's going to happen. At some point in every cycle, Bitcoin does something that no one was expecting. And the only people who get in the move is the people who stay held their conviction. Every single time a day trader gets in and out, in and out, they might win for a while and they get loud on you know social media until they miss that move and they get real, real quiet. Be a long-term investor, you know? Be a macro investor. It's easier. <laughs> but, you know, hey, do what you got to do. Cryptophagia, what's up? What's up? 16 people, it's good. 9x from last having. Yeah, guys. Let's go look at the Bitcoin dominance, see what's popping on that. 
Yes, open the super chart. I want the super chart. 18 people, it's good. Just wanted you guys to know, we almost had like 100 people when everything was at the all-time highs. Now look, we got about 19, 20 people. Okay, so it's also an indicator. Watch how many people come and go based on how they feel about the market. Crypto is a hugely, hugely emotion-driven market. Okay, so whenever you hear, you know, people having doubts about Bitcoin, feeling bad about Bitcoin, it's largely, you can't really trust that. You can't hold any kind of weight in that because these people are changing their minds about the asset based of off a whim. Don't be that person. Learn. Understand what you're investing in. Have conviction in your investments. It might not always be the sexiest investment, but at least you can hold it to the bad times. This isn't really a bad time. I've been through 97% down before, so you know. <laughs> but it's all perspective, right? 19 people, what's up? Okay, so on the monthly, we are towards the end. This is the last... I started, I drew this, I net recognized this around September, October of 2023. That's why I first brought this to you. Okay. I said somewhere around that having this structure ends. Okay. We've started to see, and I'll go in the weekly so you can see a little better. We've started to see Bitcoin move up all throughout 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024. I mean, at some point, Bitcoin got to stop moving up, right? And this is a rising wedge, which is typically a pattern reversal. It doesn't, we've talked about it here, it doesn't always mean it results to the downside, but it results to the downside 60% of the time. It's violated the structure on the bottom one, two, three. Now it's not even climbing in anymore. And it kind of did a retest. It wicked up and came back down. And now it's aggregate low for the week from its high. At some point, Bitcoin has got to give. And this thing's going to fall down. Well, Dub Digital, why is it going to fall down? Because, guys, do you see any place in this chart where Bitcoin dominance has returned back to 98%? No. Over the long term, Bitcoin dominance has made lower highs the entire way. To think it just all of a sudden goes and goes back up, that's not respecting symmetry. That's not respecting the whole geometry of the chart. That's just kind of ridiculous to think. And when you think of things like this, man, you've got to know what is going to trigger a huge drop in Bitcoin dominance like we've seen in 2020. We haven't really seen one again since 2017. But Bitcoin dominance going up is getting longer than the tooth. Even the structure that I drew you, which is a pattern of exhaustion, pretty much indicates that. Now, this is the thing about geometry. This is the thing about charting. It tells you, it gives you hints glimpses of what's going to happen in the future without any of the reason. And sometimes it's hard to understand because being investors, we like think this happened because of that cause and effect. Just, just understand what the chart's telling you, man. So what does that mean? For, for people to think that Bitcoin's going to go down over the long term or like we're going to get to go into some bear market, they're basically saying that the Bitcoin dominance chart's going to do something that's never happened before. I don't agree. Right. That's against the trend of the Bitcoin dominance chart for people to say that Bitcoin is going to stay down for, you know, rest of this year or whatever. That's not what the Bitcoin dominance says. Now, I don't know. I don't know. But the one narrative that I think that does fit into what the Bitcoin dominance chart is telling us. Is that if we're going to have some kind of two phase pump, we had the first pump in 2020 and a more prolific exponential pump coming sometime probably towards 2024. I said that after the halving, it takes about six months, eight months, a year-ish. I've seen We've seen six months before for things to start going ham. Six months would put us into October. That's why I'm saying towards the end of, um, of this year, around October, whatever, it could go a little longer than that. I think Bitcoin will be well into new all-time highs. What's going to cause that? I don't know. I'm not a freaking mind reader. I'm just a dude in a room, guy on the internet. You know, but I don't think I've said anything that's too crazy, right? I mean, I, I'm not saying anything, anything like outlandish. I'm just taking the norms we've seen in Bitcoin. 
and trying to apply it further. I mean, even on this, even on the 2013 to now kind of thing, like, you know, the, the, the chart, it doesn't look exactly the same, but you can see how I'm getting there. All I can do is provide you the data I'm looking at to piece together what I think. That's the best that anyone can do. But there's some rationale to it. We'll see if I'm right. But you guys remember how Bitcoin, I mean, all coins were flying when Bitcoin was at 73,000. And that's just barely above. I, I, could, I could see a world where Bitcoin's well over 73,000. Closer to 100,000. I'm anticipating Bitcoin going to 150,000. Let's go look at the total three. Just so you could think that I'm not crazy. RSI is now no longer overbought, which is good on the weekly. Basically what happened was since 2021, it's been in a wet, um, in a triangle. This thing result, bounced off the bottom and exited out. Now it's coming down. Like I said, Maybe you'll get a very traditional retest. That means that the altcoin market cap would be dropping potentially another 24%, 20%. Then it would touch that and then move up. That would be very clean technically. Okay, that's not weird. But when you do the measured move, the height to the bottom of the trend line from area breakout, that would suggest if this was a retest pretty soon here, this thing would climb. Well, the thousand percent. This is the altcoin market cap, excluding Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. That would be around seven trillion dollars in like altcoins without Ethereum and Bitcoin. I think we could hit around ten trillion dollars at the end of this cycle. I think everyone's just kind of trying to figure out when this how long the cycle will be, when it's going to be over. That's always the main thing. I think everyone agrees that new cycle's coming. But we're still in that area of like uncertainty, you know? Everyone's a little uncertain. They don't know. So, well, what if it goes down, you know? What if it like goes to negative bucks? The FOMO's not here yet. It's when Bitcoin doesn't just do a peep up and come down. It's when it shoots up and stays up. That's when. You get that big coverage. We, we got a taste of it. Just a little taste. But the market is ready. It's so ready. Oh, oh, you're following the Bitcoin. You want to get in? You don't want to leave your brokerage account? Cool. Buy BlackRock's product. Buy Fidelity's product. Buy that. Um, is it Valkyrie? I don't know. It's product. Buy Kathy Wood's product. Buy the product. You don't even got to custody it no more. It's never been this easy, bro. That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm psyched. Because everything's in place now. Every single cycle before this, it's always been a problem. 2017, there were no stable coins. If you're new to crypto, could you imagine crypto out of stable coins? So Bitcoin, everyone had to go to Bitcoin. And in order to get to Ethereum or any other like chain, you had to go through a centralized exchange. Now we got DEXs now. This is just going to be wild. We just haven't seen a euphoria phase. But a bunch of infrastructure has been built under this thing. But you guys know this. 21 people, what's up? Yes, yes. Richie Guru, how's it going, man? Diamond hands, diamond hands. I like it, man. Did you take, did you pull any profits off of Dog with Hat? I know you got some profits, dog. You were, you were stacking the bag early. Good to see you, bro. Hey, Xavier, thanks for showing up, man. Appreciate you. How you been? Good? Nice. Yeah, guys, I mean, you know, let's look at the fear and greed, too. I like to call it out. I like to call out the fear and greed, man. I just want you guys to see how finicky this, this space is. When things are good, people are loud. When things are bad, people get quiet. But I want you to see. I want you to see at every step of the site um, of the market when things are good and bad, the fear and greed index is a good indication of like how people really think in the space. How little people really understand the space. Because if they really understood the space, they would know that everything's moving towards this. 
every macro trend is moving towards this cashless society. You know, digital world, AI. Come on, dog. You don't think we're going to ultimately have digital money? Of course we are. Fear and greed, 57. I guess it's 57, I say percent, but I don't know if it's a percent. Now it's in greed, starting to get into the yellow. Do you guys remember when we were in extreme greed? Last month, we were at 80, 79, then 76, then 67. Then between yesterday and today, it dropped 10%. Now, did Bitcoin change between yesterday and today? Did the advent of blockchain technology, the, did the technical breakthrough of blockchain technology change between yesterday and today? No, man. No, this is why markets are all just perception of value. And the perception is made up of the participants in the space. What this indicates to me is we have a lot of new people that came in when things broke above 73. They wanted to feel new people come in because Bitcoin breaks definitively above and they want to be, how do you say it? They want to make sure they're right. The same thing happened in 2017. I think it was the uh, winter of 2016. Something like that. I forget. I just remember. Um, Yeah, I was working in El Segundo at the time. And I mean, I bought my Bitcoin and I just forgot about it for like three, four years. I didn't even look at it. You know, I was like, whatever, you know. So that's always kind of been my my strategy. Just psh, buy it if it's, you know, it goes up. Cool. But then one of my coworkers came over. He's like, hey, you hear about Bitcoin? It's up towards all-time highs again. I was like, what? Nah, what's up with this? <laughs> and he was like, oh, yeah, it's like around 1000 bucks." And I was like, word? <laughs> and then, like, he basically, uh, basically, like, you know, started paying attention to Bitcoin back then. But then the halving came, and then the price went back down. You know? And it took some time. But then it went way up farther than 1000 bucks. You know, 2017 was a special year. It changed my the way I thought about money. It changed my whole perception about what you had to do to get money. You know, and um, those times are rare in history. They're rare, but they're they come. And when they come, you need to be ready. You have you need to have your mind right too. See, like that's the main thing. Take this opportunity now to like get the, your mind right. Whether your expectations. I want you to remember how it feels that, oh, you know, the uncertainty that Bitcoin can drop at some point. This is good for you to remember because when you're at the top of the market, you know, it's going to be the reverse. It's like Bitcoin's never going to go down. You better get it now. It's going to be like pump of mentals, like crypto gain cocaine, man. You know, it's going to be like <laughs> everyone's going to be feeling it. But you need to remember times like this, right? And when you're on the bottom of the next cycle, you need to remember the times when you're at the top. You always need to remember the last phase of the cycle. That's how you navigate these things correctly. Take it from me. From someone who's mismanaged cycles before, I'm trying to help you. But yeah, guys, um, let's look at CoinMarketCap real quick. <coughs> oh, man. <coughs> Seattle. Anyone been to Seattle before? No? Anyone from Seattle? They got good teriyaki. I don't even know what, what's up with it, man. I used to, I went out there for work one time, and the teriyaki in Seattle is bussing. I don't even know why. But it's different. Make sure to get some. All right, Stacks is up. That's a, um, a Bitcoin layer two. I've actually been doing some research in the stacks. Stacks is uh, a little bit about it. If you look at the, the price. It's up in 24 hours, 7%. If you guys don't know about stacks, it's kind of like one of the premier Bitcoin layer twos at this point. They basically, what is it? Is it merged? No, it's not merged mining, but um, it's basically they pretty much hash into Bitcoin POW and they batch like no they don't batch but they do transactions on a on a side chain and then they they hash into it so basically in that way it's like connected but also it allows for bitcoin miners to commit bitcoin to the stacks network stacks holders earn a yield in bitcoin on stacks networks basically as stacks and then for committing that bitcoin 
the 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 uh, miners, the Bitcoin miners, are rewarded in STX, right? And then they could take that STX and stake it, and then it's kind of like a cycle, which is pretty interesting. But right now, Stacks is uh doing pretty well. It's been around for a little bit. Yeah, Bitcoin Layer 2 is starting to become an alpha. I'm starting to dig more into it. That's one of the benefits of uh, you know, working in this space. That's why you follow me, I guess. It's a little alpha right there. Ondo, 3%, and the seven-day, the highest gainer is 3%. Remember, it was 30%, 40%, 80%. Look how times change. 40. That's also a Bitcoin Ordinals project, right? Or, like It's an Ordinals thing. Interesting. 38%. I think this is a BRC20, maybe. Yeah. You guys know Bit B BRC20 is basically like uh think of like all coins on Bitcoin. That's an easy way to think about it. Using UTXOs. Down 36%, 32%, 32%, 32%, 30, 31% EOS. Mm. Pepe. Let's look at Pepe, man. There's always opportunity too, especially if you have some bags. If you don't have any bags to like buy, it's not a problem, man. You know, you know the next thing to do besides buy, hold. Right? That's also good too. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with holding. Sometimes you get sapped out. Don't overextend yourself. That's how you get hurt, hurt. But there's nothing wrong with holding. There's nothing wrong with taking a little profit to make sure you can get to the end. You know, it might not be at the high. But it's okay. It's better than lower low. Um, yeah, Pepe's probably gonna fall some more, man. Look at that volume dropping off a cliff. I talked about it. Once this happened right here, lower low, and you gotta just know who invests in things. Why do people invest in meme coins? Think about the psychology. If you can understand the psychology of the average investor in these coins, you can easily more predict what's gonna happen. Because prices and the decision to buy and sell are just basically people deciding in their mind, using their reasoning. If you could anticipate an average investor's reasoning in Pepe, you know that they're not going to hold this thing with any kind of loyalty. The heck? It's all people just running around trying to get mad gains. They don't care. And that's the bad thing about meme coins, right? They can go, they go up a lot real fast. They can go down a lot and real fast. This thing is looking like a bag of milk. I mean, there's some, it, it, it's trying to base out it all kind of depends, though, what comes with Bitcoin. Historically, Bitcoin goes down after halvings, and there's a long way to go before there's any technical resistance on this thing. Now, do I think Pepe's a bad play? No. I just think there might be some pain. And if you're not in Pepe, you know, maybe this is opportunity. You always gotta, you always gotta change things to your advantage, right? That's the that's the secret in staying involved in crypto. Like, damn, this is down, but like, at least I can get some more. Maybe I'll work a little harder and pick up some more. Turn a bad thing into a good thing. Turn some lemons into lemonade. Investing is a mind game. 28 people, what's up? You guys are quiet right now, man. What's going on? Man, I've been drinking ginger tea still. It's pretty bomb. Drinking tea? Look at me. <laughs> Try and turn a new leaf. I used to drink, eat too much coffee. I mean, drink too much coffee. I used to take like caffeine pills. Sitting here like, <laughs> can't be doing that anymore, man. My mi corazón. That means my heart. It means my heart. Calm before the storm. Yeah, we'll see. What do you guys think though? Like, I didn't see anyone in the chat. Do you think Bitcoin's gonna go down after the halving in a day or so, or up? What do you think? I'd love to know. Let me know. Please let me know. What else, man? Oh, yeah. I just want to point something out because I'm going to take it off the chart. But, you know, accountability. We'll see what happens here on this rising wedge on the RSI. It made sense, but now longer makes sense. Um, we'll see if it climbs back in. Sometimes it does that. But if it continues down, there's no need to hold that structure there. But yeah, guys, I mean, like, look. Fib, the Fib channel kind of changed my life in terms of, like, predicting price. 
like prices, right? Every single time we've had a top on the Fib channel, it's went down and lower, lower levels. I'm expecting for us at the end of this cycle to hit the 0.382. That's being pretty conservative. It's accounting for a 1.5 drop on the Fib channel in integrals, right? So like, yeah, right here. It might seem like a big amount in dollar terms, right? Like say if October came around like I'm expecting, I'm anticipating. That would suggest around a $300,000 Bitcoin. But when you take into account Bitcoin's movement over its life, over the whole macro cycle, it's actually lower. Because that was, I'm suggesting that it's going to top out at the 0.382. In 2020, what was this? The 0.618. In 2017, this was in between the 0.786 and the 1. In 2013, it was the one. So you obviously see that even though this sounds crazy, percentage-wise, it's less. And that's what you have to understand about like market cap. You want a big market cap? You want Bitcoin to get a trend trillion, 100 trillion bucks? That means less percentage move. But you have to be okay with some more risk. The life-changing games are in the percentages. The percentages your capital goes up. It's not in the aggregate number. Who cares if you buy a Bitcoin 100,000 goes 200,000? It's only a 100x. I mean, no, a 2x, my bad thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. All coins, you know, in the beginning of all this, Bitcoin maxis were talking all this, you know, filth, farm filth about Bitcoins. You know, everything is going to be coming to the alpha Omega coin, Bitcoin, all coins suck. That would really start to like slow down if you noticed. And it is my thought that at the end of this cycle, all coins are going to get so frothy. Like some of the new people in crypto saw how frothy all coins get, and that's nothing. They're gonna they're gonna sell their Bitcoin against some of those crypto all coin gains. That's how it's gonna go. People are gonna FOMO out of Bitcoin into all coins. I mean, you have your core maxis who just like understand Bitcoin and like its wealth preservation properties, so on and so forth. And they're never going to leave. The majority of people coming in touch Bitcoin and they see it go up less and they're going to go like, don't tell their friends, they'll just do it. That's how it's going to go. But I hope maybe I'm going to be proven wrong. What up? Crypto Cockatoo, how you doing? Good to see you. Hope. You're doing well. I'm doing well. You know, I, I think so. I mean, my, my back kind of hurts nowadays, but you know, other than that, my back's kind of bleeding nowadays. But other than that, they bleed. They bleed more. So, like, you know, I'm good. I'm good. I think there will be a drop in price of BTC after the halving, but in a few months, the price will recover to make a new all-time high. Yeah, and here's the thing. I think there will be a drop too because you know, BlackRock's not going to step in here and them be the liquidity to push us past all-time highs. They're going to buy on a drop and then they'll let retail take us in all-time highs. They'll allow a drop to happen. I just think the drop will be less, either less or shorter because there's this big, big behemoth whale, a couple whales waiting to feed on all the guppies coins. They're like, nom, 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 nom. We haven't had that before. You know, like, yeah. Crypto whales are like, you know, they got a lot of money, but it's not BlackRock money. It's not Larry Fink money. It's not Fidelity money. It's not 401k money. It's not pension money. This is different money. I, I don't think a lot of people understand how much money it is. You know, so like, you can see a day where pensioners are like, oh, went down. Cool. Yeah, I'll buy some. They don't know for your cycle. They don't care. All they know is 30 year buy and hold, you know, 37 people. What's up? We'll go down after having bear trap, then pump above 75K and rise in next months. I like that. That makes sense, man. That makes sense. Very good. Yeah. I'll be here. I always am. I've been here for four years. Longer than four years, but I've been making you know, content for four years. It's been a long time. To be honest, my whole um, 
foray into crypto has taken longer than I thought it would take. Not because, you know, I mean, because there's been mistakes along the way. Everyone makes mistakes. Not a lot of people talk about them. But I think the more we talk about mistakes, the, the faster all of us can grow, right? You can learn from my mistakes. I can learn from your mistakes. We can learn together. And if as long as you have the humility to take the lesson, you can expedite your process. But, you know, I am full-time crypto. A lot of people aim for that. That's cool. But I just have this sneaking suspicion that... How do I say this? I have feelings, man. I get feelings. And I just got to speak a suspicion that, like, you know, this is going to be a critical time in history, monetary-wise. I mean, just look at it. The U.S. debt payments, like the interest payments, are over a trillion dollars. If it keeps going up, you know, then the interest payment will be greater than the income tax generated every year that's crazy and unsustainable um unaffordability across the world people are talking about it now it's not just this like oh you know in oil and this and that it's in insurance it's in housing it's in rent it's everywhere you look it's just not it's not sustainable something's got to give right? expansion of war it's typically a very inflationary thing you think this war popping up just came out of nowhere you think it doesn't have, an, have to do with money and spending and grabbing resources at affordable prices? Guys, I mean, just because you don't think like that doesn't mean governments don't think like that. It's funny that a lot of the countries we have problems with in the world today are oil generating. Russia, Iran. Now, they, you know, however you feel about the situations is immaterial. You cannot deny that America is always kind of involved but countries that have rich financial resources and we're at a time where we can use some liquidity. So like, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I know something's connected. I'm not in the back room. I'm just a dude who reads some books, listens to some YouTube videos and I'm all up on the internet, you know, but I just see the sneaking suspicion that if you get a chance, if the good God blesses you and gives you the ability to take care of some things off your checklist, Reduce some of your expenses, secure your place in the world, help out some people you care about, maybe be a, a the cornerstone to people around you. I think that's the right thing to do, you know, because one thing's for sure. I came into crypto thinking that Bitcoin was always going to go up and never going to come down and I'd gone at the perfect time. And you know, what? it's come down frequently. So this time probably won't be any different. But I can't say for certain. So the one way I would combat that was have a have a portfolio mindset. I've talked about it. 80% out, 20 in, 50 out, 50 in, 10% in, 90 out, 90 in, 10 out. Whatever's right for you, you know? But if the stock market goes up, if crypto goes up, just look around you and know that the whole economic landscape is anemic. It's sick. Everything is sick. It's, you know, it, the birth rates are going down. Cost of living is going up. Cost of fuel is going up. Housing affordabilities at all time, um, in affordabilities at all time high. There's something wrong here. Can't put my finger on it. But I bet you would agree. And that's what happens right before big problems in economies, guys. All we have to do is go back and look at the 1920s. Because in the 1930s, the Great Depression happened. And I'm not trying to be like scaring you, but I just want to put this in perspective for you. 1920s, everything ran up. It's called the boom in um, the raging 20s. People were flooded with cash, making money. Euphoria was happening. And then a deflationary event happened. You know, we've seen stock market hitting all time highs. It's still at all time highs. It's correcting a little bit now. It's just all when they want to pull the plug. But I'm in the, I think that, especially because this is election year, they got some stuff up their sleeves, whether that's rate cuts, whether that's some unforeseen reason to print money. Guys, we're in multiple wars at this point, proxy wars. We can't just stop funding them. 
They have to be funded. Money doesn't come from nowhere. 45 people, what's up? That's why um, I got to go pretty soon. But um, I do suggest you guys continue to read economic books. The more you learn about the economy, the easier all of this gets because you get data points not only from crypto, but from the world. You know, If oil starts going up, inflation will go up because it takes oil to transport goods. If transporting goods goes up, that gets passed on to the consumer, on to you. If things are going up, financial assets go up. People flood into financial assets to try to hold their purchasing power when there's runaway inflation. The Federal Reserve is starting to talk about inflation starting to you know, be a little more stickier. We have to hold interest rates. See where this is going? But hey, 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 I gots to go, guys. It's been fun. My name is Dub Digital. I like to talk about crypto things, but also I like to talk about economic things as well. I come up on the internet. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time-ish. And it's always good to talk to you guys. Um, I'm going to be heading over to X Spaces soon. I'm not sure if I can make the hash it out today. Some things are going on my way. But um, make sure to check out Blind Dave's video, hash it out as well. Um, that's always fun. Xavier's going to be there probably. So until next time, guys, it's Dub Digital. Talk to you later. Peace.